No matter where in the world you're joining us from, we welcome you. This is the Wrestling of Padre Slamcast on Dragon Wagon Radio. Johnny LaQuasto here with you. Of course, follow us at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, uh, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. I'm at Jake Quasto. This is a bit of a solo mission uh, this week, but please follow Jake Lloyd at Liquid Jake because he's the one producing everything. He's the one that put this episode together. Of course, follow Dale Rutledge at The Walking Dale. Scott Narver at Scott Narver, who are currently both in Japan, just had a great time at uh, Wrestle Kingdom, and you hopefully heard that episode uh, they recorded afterwards. And of course, follow Jay Washington at Mr. Jay Washington. You know, this is an incredible week for pro wrestling. We just get off the heels of Wrestle Kingdom, which I believe had the highest ticket sales in history. The All Elite Wrestling uh, Rally was incredibly successful. I don't even know how many people showed up outside of the Jaguar Stadium, and they made some incredible announcements, which is so exciting. Whether you're a fan or whether you work in wrestling, it's a win for everybody because they have the means to make something so special. And so I thought, with All Elite Wrestling doing something incredibly special, I want to put this episode out this week about Ring of Pakistan. They are a company that is doing something unheard of in their country, and that is creating professional wrestling. And I've been fortunate enough to to be a part of it from day one, um, going back to about a year, over a year and a half ago, 2017. Uh, What's interesting about them is how they explain, and you'll hear uh, this in the interview, Fans in Pakistan only know WWE. It's hard to understand as Americans because we know there's pro wrestling and also WWE. A lot of the fans there don't know that. They don't know there's professional wrestling outside of WWE because that's such a big brand. And so what Ring of Pakistan's trying to do is show the fans that, hey, you have other options and they're trying to create something really special. And uh, I, I don't even know if I ever got a chance to explain how I got involved. It all it goes back to early part of 2017. I got a message from uh, my good friend Melissa Santos, very talented ring announcer from Lucha Underground, uh, does tons of other things, works for other companies as well. Uh, she sent me a message <laughs> that said, hey, do you want to go to Pakistan? And to which I replied, you're going to have to elaborate. And she did. She told me about you know the company and that she was going over there and she recommended me. And you know I got my visa and uh, sure enough, I went over and you know, what an experience it was. We did three shows, uh, one in Karachi, one in Lahore, and one in Islamabad. They all drew thousands of people. Uh, the final one in Islamabad, I believe, was close to 10,000. And it was incredible. I mean, the electricity uh, in every arena we were in, the fans were incredible. They were chanting American pro wrestling chants. That's how passionate they are. And when it was over, you know, the, the Ring of Pakistan team said, hey, we're going to do this again. We don't know when, right? And fast forward to 2018, uh, they reached out again. They planned it all out. And in early December, I was able to fly over there. Uh, this show we did was in Lahore at the Lahore Cultural Center. A really cool outdoor arena. I did a whole, like, 11-minute vlog on the whole trip on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. I also put it on Twitter and Facebook as well. Uh, we had about 4,000 people pretty much jam-packed the arena and it was just incredible. I mean, I was the official host, uh, ring announcer, commentator, timekeeper. I wore a lot of hats. But, you know, hey, when you're flying all the way to Pakistan, I'd rather have it no other way. I want to be as busy as possible. You know, I want to have my hands in creating the best show we can. And that's what we did. And, and you know, shout out to every wrestler that was involved. Uh, Casey Spinelli, Tom LaRufa, Tiny Iron, Tango Tim Wiley, Crater, Red Scorpion, Bernard Van Dam, Mila Smith, Ho Ho Loon, Yasin Asmani, Bjorg Hakan, Adam Benseba. Of course, uh, Chris Masters was the American representative. He fought uh, our special guest for the Ring of Honor, um, I'm sorry, for the Ring of Pakistan uh, World Championship. And of course, my special guest is going to be uh, Badshah Pelwa Khan, who is the Pakistani professional wrestler. And he was really the, the reason this whole thing came about, along with a great team of other people as well involved. And so uh, it was just an incredible experience, and that's kind of the story and how I got involved. I really look forward to doing more because as far as I know, they have a television deal with Hum Television over there, and what we shot is going to air, and very excited to see how it turns out. But without further ado, uh, I sat down with uh, Badshah Pelwa Khan uh, after everything was over. There were only three of us left. Everyone had already flown back home. It was me, Badshah, and Chris Masters. We were there for one final day to do media, 
And luckily, I had uh, about 15 minutes to sit down with him just to get his story and how it came about. And I really think, you know, one thing I know about the Compadres fans is you guys are really passionate about wrestling. You don't just need to hear WWE. You want to hear about all our experiences, whether it's, you know, Dale living in Japan or Scotty doing, you know, on your mark and traveling around or Jay being a 16 year in ring veteran. And even Jake trained as a wrestler way back in the day uh, before he left New York. And so I know you guys love hearing everything we do. And so I think this is a really cool thing for you guys to listen to. Enjoy the interview uh, with Badsha Palwa Khan, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, greetings from Lahore, Pakistan. There's only a few of us left before we all travel around the world back to where uh, back to where we live. But I'm here with the, the catalyst of you know a lot of great people behind Ring of Pakistan, but... This guy is the Ring of Pakistan uh, champion, and he's uh, actually the, the the reason I'm here. Uh, you know, we first got into contact about oof, almost two years ago, and I just wanted to talk to him just to kind of get his story because the the whole thing with Ring of Pakistan is it's a huge undertaking. It was a huge project. It wasn't just one person involved. I mean, to to bring pro wrestling to a country that has never seen it live before is. Uh, an incredible endeavor, and they have pulled it off. So, uh, how you doing, brother? Yeah, fine, bro. And you? You haven't slept in how many weeks? Yeah, I, I since two weeks I sleep uh, only uh, three, four hours uh, per night, <laughs> and so that's uh, lots of work there. Too much work, and uh, work for work. Yeah, I sleep even. Uh, we have too much work that we forgot about eating. So sure. So one or two meal per day. So it was very difficult for me, uh, you know, because uh, as a wrestler you have to stay fit, sleep well, and uh, go to the gym and put all the promotion, etc. No time for gym, no time for food, no time for sleep. So it wasn't easy for me to to. It wasn't easy, but uh, end of the day when the show started. Started when I did my match, I felt good. Mm-hmm. I felt good, but before my match, I didn't felt good. I was nearly colla- collapsing. But when I mu- when I heard my music hit, I changed. A new man come in me, came in me, and uh, I did my en- I did my entrance, and public was very happy to oh, see. Oh yeah, me. the the crowd was insane. And um, I wrestled Chris Masters, sure, for the Ring of Pakistan World Heavyweight Championship, and. I retain my title, so I'm pretty happy. As you should be. Now, that that's the what you mentioned is, you know, all the work leading up to the show. Then the hard part is, oh, yeah. wait, I have to wrestle now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing is, I had different hats and not uh, five, six hats, but at least uh, money, 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 many hats. So it was very, very difficult for me. Lots of pressure. So uh, as uh, Johnny can, uh, can say that, in backstage I wasn't the nice guy I was like yelling to everyone yeah do that now don't go there blah 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 well to be fair I was yelling at one point too <laughs> let's just say I don't think anyone's gonna ever see this on television so, there is a well known comedian in Pakistan who I guess had to be on the show and uh, decided to go into the ring when he wasn't supposed to and then he would not leave the ring and so yeah, he, actually he was supposed to go to the ring but he has two to four minutes uh of uh, of time. Oh boy! But he took twenty to thirty minutes, so that pissed me off, kind of. It pissed so, me off too. We were both yeah, pissed at the same time, yeah. just in different areas. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't good for me because I never let outsiders do uh, come in the ring or come in pro wrestling because I I prefer uh, keeping a good work. Uh, every time you put in an outsider, it, the work is. The work quality. Um, well, yeah, because they don't understand what a wrestling show is, and also this was a huge production. I mean, I, yeah, I lost yeah. count of how many cameras. I think there was a, there were at least thirteen cameras. Right, and this guy obviously he's well known in comedy. Yeah, and yeah, I get it. He's a if the hard talker is a big star here, sure. especially in Lahore, is a big star, and even my father is a big fan of him. But uh, I man, but, but here's the he's, problem. But he, he's pretty entertaining. No, he was but, fine, but there gets a point where he becomes but, disrespectful. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing is, uh, public come to see pro wrestling, and uh, that that doesn't work. Sometimes when you put uh, 
like uh, you know you want to put something that public doesn't want to see yep. in the ring so that something doesn't work so well look at WWE I mean it happens in America how many times will they have a special musician or a special whoever and the crowd doesn't care it happens everywhere yeah but uh, you know in Pakistan it's different they wanted to put some you know uh, Pakistani um, masala Pakistani stuff in that sure. to popular, popularize pro wrestling in Pakistan and but, I understand uh, I understand that it can work but um, it will be, I, I think it will, it will take sometimes maybe in two three maybe maximum five years next five years pro wrestling will be the top thing in Pakistan and yeah. uh, everybody will <clears throat> know what pro wrestling is because the the word pro wrestling isn't common in Pakistan people for them it's WWE Right, they so they don't... think WWE, that, that's it's a whole other entity yeah. versus the word pro wrestling, which is so interesting to me, but it does make sense because you see WWE on, on TV here all the time, but that's the only wrestling they see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the thing is uh, for them, when you, even when they see poster flyers for of uh, Ring of Pakistan events, they were like, is John Cena's coming? Is oh, this God. coming? <laughs> so the thing is, uh, people there, it doesn't, uh, know the indie scene. They, sure. they know only the big league. Like they don't. They don't. They, they know only WWE. So and for someone like you, who you primarily wrestle in Europe, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I would. And I've never worked in Europe, but I would imagine there is an indie scene there. Yeah, and yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's television too, mm-hmm. but there's so many promotions. So I imagine it's got to be difficult leaving Europe, which operates somewhat like the states. And then you come here to where it, you have to be reminded, oh, wait, they only know WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, the, the, it's easy to work here as a... Um, um, the crowd is easy. Like uh, in the U, or UK or Europe, you have to do difficult... Like, uh, They're hard to predict. Uh, yeah, the difficult stuff, you know, like uh, you have to... Uh, you have to wrestle as an indie style, you know, to get right. some pop. But in Pakistan, it's easy. Even when a body slam, people cheers a lot. They even a hold they cheer, so it's pretty easy. So it's fun wrestling there. So it really is. It's um, it's easy and it's public reaction, especially for a guy like me. Uh, the thing is, I'm uh, I'm um, <clears throat> I can say I, I won't compare myself as uh, Hulk Hogan, but I'm the you're the, you're the hometown hero. Yeah, you are the is. only Pakistani professional wrestler yeah, yeah, yeah. that's competing right now. And so, I know you mentioned like in Europe, you're primarily a heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you come home, all of a sudden you yeah. throw on your jacket, yeah, and yeah, yeah. people lose their minds. Yeah, 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 the thing is in Europe, I, I work. Uh, I since eight years I'm working as a heel, but uh, yesterday when I work as a face, I, I felt pretty good because last time I worked as a face in Pakistan, I was like, it's not me, it's fake, it's because every time I wrestle, it's I wrestled with the heart, so it was a very difficult last time. But this time, I actually I was a face, but I was acting like a heel in the ring, like as uh, it's, it's so so I, I was a face, but I was acting like a heel in the ring, and it it uh, gave me confidence to continue the work. And public was behind me, right. and it was pretty good. So I was happy with the reaction, and public was really happy. Uh, someone from the crowd said. Uh, Said that uh, the the weather here is cold, so public were cold and they they didn't want it to cheer. They were too uh, cold to cheer, huh. and uh, they said when when I I we, they saw when they saw Bacha enter, they were like they, they got heat up. So that was pretty good. So to 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 get this kind of key, heat back feedback and uh, another feedback I got was from Chris Masters. She says uh, when I wrestled you it was like I was wrestling John Cena I was like wow that yeah. was yeah he said the, it, 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 it was like I, I'm wrestling John Cena so it was pretty uh, big big compliment for me that sure he's comparing me as John Cena who's a legend for me that which means that I did a pretty good job you did a good job even, even in the in the pressures because I had to check everything I had to check the ring the mics uh, if the boy, the boys are okay backstage. And also, there are other people changing, making decisions, and not telling you, yeah, yeah, and then not telling me. Yeah, and it's just all, you know. But yeah, that, so, you know, it is what it is. That yeah. happens. But 
And also, Masters did a great job yeah. as a heel because that crowd was so excited. A lot of heels were having a hard time getting booed because the crowd was so... So Masters came out, cut that promo, yeah. really made people not like him. Yeah. And that added to the match because then the story was there and then everyone hated him and really yeah, yeah, cheered yeah. you. Even yeah. when you hit him with a low blow, the crowd yeah. was like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked by it. Yeah. On commentary, I just go, oh, wait! Yeah. Okay, I guess I'll say low blow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that led to, you know, the finish and everything. Yeah. Um, so how did Ring of Pakistan come about? I mean, was it someone approached you about it or yeah, actually actually since 2014 I was I was trying to bring professionals into Pakistan wow and uh, in 2000 in 2015 I got um, huge media coverage coverage in Pakistan because uh, I applied you know for WWE tough enough oh and my video uh, my my audition uh, went viral in Pakistan and Jeez. through the media and uh, and uh, lots of people got an eye on me. And in 2016, someone wanted to bring professional wrestling in Pakistan. And uh, he said that, call, contact the guy in France, who is, is the Pakistani guy in France who does professional wrestling. So we can, with the help of him, we can get professional wrestling here. So we started in 2016. We did a press conference in August 2016. Me, Tiny Aaron, Flash Gordon, and and uh, PWP team. It was a uh, pro wrestling you, Pakistan. You, called you know Tiny from Europe. Yeah, 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 Tiny and me, we wrestle... Yeah, I know him since 2014. Mm -hmm. We wrestle in the same company in the France, at WS Wrestling Stars, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, which exists since 40, 40 years. And 40, I met and 40 years. jean marie Albouy, who I did commentary with. He yeah, is... Uh, the president of the company. He's the new president, okay. The president and... Uh, and Fresh Gordon is behind that, so, sure. I, so they, they both are together. And yeah, we started in 2016. Uh, it, was, it, it was supposed to call Pro Wrestling Pakistan (PWP). We worked with them. Uh, I, I, I started with them. Uh, we had a press conference in August 2016, and the show was supposed to be in uh, November 2016. And Chris Master was booked on that show, but due to some issues, we had to cancel the shows. And uh, so we. And I, uh, I, and I refused uh, working with the, the people I was supposed to work with. Then I met uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Asma Lisha, who is the current uh, CEO of that company, Iron of Pakistan. And we, we did first, first, I met him in France. And uh, we did first show in 2017, May 2017, where we booked the guys like Wade Barrett, uh, Carlito, and Chris Master was supposed to be there again. But due to an injury, he couldn't come. Oh man! So uh, third time to, is a charm. <laughs> so we had to re replace him for, uh, by Carlito. So Wade Barrett, were, Wade Barrett was there. Carlito was there. Uh, Melissa Santos from Blue Chandra was there. So lots of guys were there. We had at least I think we had a team of 25 foreigners. So he that was, was that was pretty big, 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 and. Um, we did three shows in Karachi, Lahore, and Islamabad. And Melissa's the reason that I came here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You because asked, who do you recommend? And Melissa recommended yeah, me. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I talked to Melissa. I wanted someone who can comment. And she said, yeah, John Lucasto. He lives uh, in Los Angeles. And I said, yeah, okay. Because in Los Angeles, I had some contact who can give visa uh, for uh, Americans uh, quickly. Yep, but I didn't have to, had to push that. For you, I had to push uh, for Kalito because uh, the show, uh, no, Kal um, Kalito you, uh, was supposed to, um, no, uh, Chris Masters was supposed to come, but uh, he told me that he did, couldn't come due to an injury, mm. and he, he didn't have a visa also. So I had to book um, Kalito last minute. Right. He got big, I think, Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, and his flight was uh, Sunday or Monday. So I had maybe one or two days to get his visa. Oh boy! So I contact my per my guy. He, uh, Kalito went to the embassy. They told him it will take seven days to get visa, seven working days. So it was a big uh, issue for me. So I contact my per my guy, and he gave uh, he in one day he get visa for uh, Kalito, one year visa, multiple entry uh, in one day. So I was pretty ha happy. Yeah. And then Kalito uh, was able to come to Pakistan and. And I wrestled him in the first show in Karachi. Kalito was me, main event, and Wade Barrett is the guest referee. The match was pretty good, and yeah. 
Public was happy, but I was I wasn't good as I was good yesterday because uh, as a face I was new, so I didn't knew what to do uh, in the ring uh, as a facial expression, as uh, the move, how to move in the ring. Because when you move in the ring as a heel and or oh, yeah. and as a face, it's all different. It's different. So yeah. I was doing stuff that I felt that it was it's kind of a shit. So. <laughs> So, but yesterday I felt really good. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty. It was fun. Yeah, I felt like I was pretty good in the ring uh, as, really a, as, as a face. So, and, and I think what what last night did. Obviously, last year was incredible, but last night the the setup of the arena. Yeah. I mean, there there are venues. I've had people messaging me all day saying, I can't believe how amazing it looks. Like you have no idea how many wrestling promotions in America will try to run a pay-per-view and they won't look like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think Ring of Pakistan... Huge, huge money was invested sure. to to bring professional wrestling in Pakistan and uh, they want they don't want to do uh, low-quality work. They want to do high-quality work so yep. uh, people got uh, attracted by the, that and... Um, and Hum TV has officially picked yeah, it up. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. going to be... Na- it's going to be... Uh, airing on Hum TV, which is a huge television channel yeah. in Pakistan. So a huge family entertainment channel. Where yes, there's lots of um, uh, drama series in that, and that's why we had to cover uh, female wrestlers because uh, if uh, they are not covered, right, right, right. Uh, it will be difficult to show them on TV. So yeah, but it's going to be really exciting stuff. Yeah. Only the beginning, and looking forward to seeing it grow. And uh, you know, thanks for being on the show. Yes, yes, yes. bye bye. <laughs> There you have it. That was my interview with Badshah Pelwa Khan and my experience um, in Pakistan. I cannot wait to go back. Follow Ring of Pakistan at Ring of Pakistan, and you'll find out everything that is going to be happening with them. Uh, of course, we're at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, facebook.com slash wrestling compadres. I'm at Jay Quasto, and I think we might be releasing another special episode this week. Uh, but nonetheless, like I said, crazy week. I'm glad we got to put this out there for you. And I cannot wait to be back in studio in a couple of weeks. Until then, uh, well, thanks for listening. And keep chasing your dreams.